If you've ever watched Star Trek, you've probably heard about red matter. With the help of this substance, the film created a bomb and epically destroyed a planet. Of course, red matter is just a fiction of the creators of the series, and the reaction of scientists to such a scenario is easy to imagine. In reality, such a substance would have to have a mass millions of times larger than the Earth and instantly collapse. Therefore, according to official science, it's simply impossible to create such a bomb to destroy planets. But I don't agree with this. After all, Captain Spock's home planet wasn't destroyed by red matter. It was sucked in by a giant black hole that arose from the interaction of red matter with the nuclear reaction. I think you can already guess what I'm getting at. To create a deadly space bomb and tear any celestial body to pieces, you don't have to beat your head against the wall inventing red matter. All you need is a black hole. Before you is Micro Quasar GRS 1915. It's here at a distance of 1,600 parsecs from Earth that there's a black hole suitable for my experiment. Its mass is about 14 times the mass of the Sun, and like most black holes, it rotates on its axis. 1,150 revolutions per second. This speed of rotation forms a special elliptical region around around the black hole, the ergosphere. All objects that fall into this zone inevitably begin rotating along with the black hole. It's like an energy vortex, but an object that's trapped in the ergosphere can still escape. As it spins, it receives some of the black hole's energy, accelerates, and then, like a dart from a sling, it flies back, taking with it a huge supply of kinetic energy from the ergosphere. This phenomenon is called the Penrose process, and it allows you to use a black hole as humans have used all the energy sources that they have mastered for two purposes, to create and destroy. To create a bomb, we will artificially throw light photons into this vortex, and as an output, we'll receive radiation with colossal energy taken from the ergosphere. To prevent photons from flying away and returning back to the ergosphere for a new portion of energy, we need to surround the black hole with a spherical mirror structure. And to create such a mirror shell with a thickness of 10 centimeters and place it around the ergosphere, we need one large asteroid to get enough material. Now, the photons that fly out of the ergosphere with additional energy are reflected off the mirrors and returned back to the cosmic vortex, acquiring more and more additional energy with each cycle. The black hole is playing space ping pong with us. The energy inside the mirror sphere is increasing more and more, and if you don't release it from the shell in time, then sooner or later, the hole will explode. And then it will spew out so much energy that it could really destroy not only a planet, but an entire star system. The power of the explosion of such a hole would be about 40 octillion megatons of TNT, the amount of energy released during the explosion of a supernova. To achieve the same effect, we would have to detonate an amount of TNT several trillion times the mass of our planet. But let's hope that by the time humanity is able to reach a black hole, we'll no longer need to fight with our own kind, and humans will be able to acquire this energy for peaceful purposes. And to do this, a simple method is already well known. Replace the mirrors around the black hole with panels that generate energy from photon radiation. I'm certain that the colossal energy obtained from the black hole would allow civilization to make a huge leap in its development, and our dreams of colonizing other planets will finally come true. I hope that if humans invent red matter, it will become a source of energy for peaceful purposes, and that it will never be used to destroy anything living.
I don't know about you, but after preparing this video, I wanted to turn off all the electricity in my virtual laboratory and light a candle to sit in silence, out of reach, and think about the great things that future civilizations are waiting for. Our lives were turned upside down by the discovery of electricity and nuclear power, and our distant descendants will come to develop ways of harnessing stars and black holes. I hope they can direct their discoveries in a reasonable way and not create bombs that will destroy our galaxy. Write in the comments what you think about it. But if we return to the Star Trek series, which I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there are much more interesting discoveries for science. How about a photon torpedo that's equipped with antimatter warheads? It is much more realistic to create such a weapon, but I cannot vouch for the consequences.